You are all welcome to As a Matter of Fact once again. Like I always say, we don't take it for granted that you, you, know, you get off your time and watch this channel. We really appreciate, and if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel because we bring you really good content that we believe will you know, move you from one step to another as far as understanding how Africa, East Africa, and you know, all the countries that make up East Africa move. You are welcome aboard and please feel at home. Today we're going to talk about DRC. We've had so many series about the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, speaking about the peace talks, speaking about the progress and the army that is being put together by East Africa, you know, to confront the M23, the M23 uh, not adhering to uh, the, the uh, truths and so many things that we've really discussed in regards to the DRC. And today, quite a little bit different, we're going to look at, is it true that UPDF is losing the battle in DRC? Is it true that UPDF, is it true that Operation Suja is a failure? That is going to be our center of concentration. Is it true that Operation Shuja is a failure? There is a report that was made by the UN stating that the Operation Shuja that started last year in 2021 in the DRC following, you know, the attacks in Kampala by the ADF, the Operation Shuja has not been as successful as it was ought to be. That was according to the report by the UN that had over 350 pages. Now, there are so many things that, you know, concern me about that report, but, you know, before you even talk about the report, the way you can be so much interested in... Uh, the affairs of a far away country like DRC as the UN. But nevertheless, you know, they are working within their jurisdictions to, you know, come up with a report concerning the UN. Now, according to this report, you know, after the reinsurgence, after the reinsurgence of the ADF in last year, uh, when um, the attacks took place in Kampala and UPDF, you know, deployed troops in the DRC alongside the FADAC of DR Congo, so many ADF rebels were displaced from their original places. But according to the UN, this instead stirred them to carry out more raids and more attacks, both in the DRC and then the recently seen attacks inside Uganda. You know, it was reported that over 40 rebels from the ADF group entered Uganda, and the reports from the UPDF spokesperson Felix Kleige are that about 20 of them were killed, others were, you know, captured, and then others died on their way back. But they were able to enter Uganda and carry out a raid. However, um, the report goes on to say that, um, you know, there, were in, there was an increase in the raids after the UPDF had deployed in the DRC. You know, so many children were abducted by the ADF. Uh, so many villages were attacked and all that transpired. Now, you need to understand that, you know, like we've already said, there are over 140 rebel groups in the DRC, but the most notable have been M23 and the ADF. So I don't want you to mix the two. The M23 uh, has, okay, has not attacked Uganda at one point. But it has been the ADF, which is believed to have roots in Uganda, because we understand that the leader of the ADF up to now is still in Rosita prison. 
uh, that is Jamiru Mukuru. Uh, so, you know, the sales have been going on, the, the operations have been going on. So, the report by the UN said that the Operation Suja has done less and had little successful registered than it ought to be. And these are allegations that have been refuted highly by the UPDF through the spokesperson saying that one, the UN has no mandate, has no moral authority to measure the success of Shuja operation. After all, their own operation in the DR Congo has always failed. So they therefore don't have the, you know, the right and the mantle to discuss the success story or the failures of the UPDF in the DRC. Well, we all know that when you, when, uh, you know, the Shuja uh, operation started, definitely the ADF were, you know, kind of caught and where and so many of their, you know, camps were raided, so many of them were captured, others were killed and so many of them scattered. So it looks as though after, after they had scattered, they started carrying out isolated attacks. And those are the basis on which the UN is writing their report. That over, uh, like I always do, we're going to work with a given article from the Daily Monitor. But it seems that this report is based on those isolated attacks that the ADF did. But the UPDF did a commendable job of, you know, driving them as far as they can from their original camps, capturing many, killing many, and, you know, others dispersing. So, we're going to critically look at this article in the Daily Monitor that, you know, captures several details from this report that was released by the UN to paint for you a picture for you to see if or the Operation Shuja has been a success or a failure in the DRC. Uh, the working title of this article that was released on Sunday 25th of December 2022, uh, uh, that is on Christmas, reads, UN report questions UPDF gains in Congo. A UN report has cast doubt on the effectiveness of Uganda's Operation Shuja, the offensive against the Allied Democratic Forces, ADF outfit, based in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. In November 2021, President Museveni authorized the deployment of troops to DRC in a joint offensive with the Congolese army, FADAC. Okay, so we all remember that after the attacks, that were carried out in uh, Uganda late last year, uh, the president, you know, okayed the deployment of the, du of the UPDF after an agreement with the, the president of DRC, uh, Felix Tshisekedi, that, you know, the ADF should be uprooted from the roots. So that is that led to the deployment. At 236, Um, a 236 page report by the group of experts of the Democratic Republic of Congo seen by this publication that is Daily Monitor which covers a number of conflicts including that of the sanctioned M23 outfit shows ADF outfit has instead gained momentum. That is a point of concern if it is true, as we're going to look at, uh, saying that following the arrival of UPDF in the DRC, in Operation Suja, the ADF have gained momentum. Now, the question here is, has UPDF been doing nothing in the DRC? Because that is typically what uh, the, this report by the UN experts, or is almost saying 
that the UPDF has literally done nothing in the DRC, so the ADF have instead gained momentum. But we all remember that so many ADF rebels were killed and captured as soon as the UPDF entered in the DRC. Let's continue. Brigadier General Felix Kulaije, the defense spokesperson, in an interview said, the UN experts should be the last to lecture Uganda's People's Defense Forces on the effectiveness of their operations. Yes, uh, like I just told you a while ago, uh, the UN had prior deployed in the DRC, but themselves saw no fruits of their deployment. They were not able to drive away the ADF. They were not able to even, you know, make them scared. So, according to Felix Kreige, they have no moral authority. They, and they should be the last group to lecture UPDF on the effectiveness of the Operation Suja in DRC. Uh, we continue. You know What's wrong with my phone? What's wrong with my phone? Okay. A, sub, a subtitle reads, No Tangible Success. Now, Okay, it must, it could be figurative to say no tangible success, but um, if not, how tangible would you want the success of the UPDF to be measured? How? Anyways, we continue. The UN experts note that the security and humanitarian situation in North Kivu and Ituri provinces has significantly deteriorated. Despite the continuous enforcement of the state of siege over the past eight months and despite military operations conducted by FADAC and UPDF and the United Nations against destabilization missions in DRC, the report specific specifics of each of the ADF attacks on civilians. Since April 2022, for example, the since April 2022, 2022, this year, the ADF attacks have resulted into the killing of 370 civilians and the abductions of at least 374, including a significant number of children. Okay? So here they are giving us uh, stats of, you know, how many uh, abductees and... Uh, uh, people have been killed by the ADF. The ADF experts say rooted and burnt hundreds of houses and destroyed rooted health centers, mainly in the efforts to obtain medical supplies. Attacks on civilians attributed to ADF were concentrated around Buhema Boga, Banyari Ta uh, Chabi, Chefaris, Ituri, as well as the southeast of Beni territory. Despite the joint operation by FADAC and UPDF Shuja, Ed, UP, uh, UN experts conclude that ADF has continued its ge geographical expansion and conducted attacks against civilians in Beni territory, North Kivu, and southern Ituri. The investigators say ADF has continued to operate in small groups launching attacks simultaneously on multiple fronts. You know, uh, launching attacks on, uh, simultaneous, uh, simultaneously on multiple fronts is to mean that after UPDF dismantled uh, the ADF, now, they have isolated themselves into small units, units of 10, 20 people, and they carry out isolated attacks on civilians, abduct children, abduct girls, women, men. You know, and you know, that is not something that should be a basis to call the Operation Shuja a failure because the fact that they've been able to penetrate these cells, they've been able to uh, uh, drive the idea from their original positions uh, is a point to say that that is a success. Much as probably there are still elements in, definitely they are there, there are still cells, there are still groups of ADF in the DRC that are carrying out isolated attacks. 
it cannot be a point to generalize to say that UPDF has not been successful in the DRC. The UPDF has done a great job. We understand that, you know, one of their leaders, one of the people that have, that lead a cell in Masaka recently was captured. So, the Ugandan government and the, Ed, the UPDF are doing a great job in ensuring that the ADF is dealt with. Now, those attacks that, you know, those are more like kicks of a dying horse. When a, when a horse is about to die, it throws kicks everywhere. So me, I want, I, I look at it as though the ADF are throwing their last kicks uh, before they are no more. Okay? Now, the fact that uh, UPDF has deployed again another 1,000 troops in, you know, as a standing force in the DRC should be, you know, this much as this is to do with the M23, but at the end of the day, it's all UPDF in, DR, in DRC. So this should as well serve as a scaring point for the ADF, for the remnants of the ADF out there that things are about to go hard on them. So this UN report is, you know, um, it is a report that is generalized. Because you see, they even include themselves among the failed, you know, um, among the failed groups in the DRC, citing that the, the, the ADF is instead of you know, being wiped out, expanding. But they are expanding as isolated units, units of very few people, units of very few rebels, because the main the group, the IOTA of the ADF, was dismantled in the first two months when the UPDF entered DRC. And that is documented everywhere. So this report should not generalize, should not make people lose their sleep over the ADF because largely they've been dealt with much as there are still elements of them in the DRC. So, is Operation Suja, or is it true that Operation Suja, according to you, is a failure in the DRC? Is it true that UPDF really has failed in the Operation Suja in the DRC? I don't believe so. Because if that was the case, so many, we understand that so many attacks have been repelled. Maybe they, have, they would have been successful. Those attacks would have taken place if it wasn't for the UPDF. Like I always say, I'm not a security expert. I'm just a commentating journalist uh, who wishes well for this country. And I want to thank you for being part of today's show. We don't take it for granted. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please go ahead. We always bring you like such stories and throw light on them so that you can understand the situations. Thank you so much. Adios. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button such that you can be reminded whenever we put a new video. Much love.